and here he is and then you go to his make sure he has your build ability and then you go to his command card and it's already all done here but uh, I also have a another button called build tier 1 and tier 2 towers which is just a button like the build one like the one I just showed um, except this one will say go to your sub menu in its description or whatever and then all it does is a sub menu goes to command card 2 so go to command card 2 and here you can see build drink cola ability build 1 2 build drink cola and you can see all my other towers there that these ones are all set to and cancel of course cancel sub menu um, so that pretty much details that um, now I'd like to show where's oh yeah and the one two builder aka the builder for the players um, he is a flying unit so it's good to have your builder as a flying unit um, that moves pretty fast and um, I believe he is invulnerable yeah so you can't kill him um, just good things to have good things to know and good things to have uh, let's see so uh, let's go back to actors so one thing when I duplicate a tower is I had also duplicated the build birth Protoss and just called it build birth drink build birth uh, drink I mean um, the model is still the Protoss thing though uh, but in the events I would just I said I tinted it so it's a, bit, a little bit yellow when it when it spawns that little blue that blue energy ball that normally comes out this was still here from the Protoss thing um, but the other important thing is that uh, I added all these so I just went right click add event and then set this up when it starts to create this actor and I had to do that for all of these so when I duplicated this is something I had to do separately that I couldn't duplicate and the drink splat which is a little ground texture underneath the tower which by the way um, it only displays on high or ultra I think so uh, medium and low graphics don't actually see this and there's just no way to change that um, outside of using a completely different system um, so the scale and then the model is set to building splat and building splat you can just see is set to Terran Tarmac 01 with no variations. Um, so back here, and then in events here, whenever unit birth, whenever the birth of Cola Tower happens, we just create this actor, and we're done. And I tinted it, by the way, for each race, I tinted it differently. That's why you see a drink splat, mall splat. They're all. That's why I didn't just combine it into one. And this this field here doesn't matter for this. Um, and then the unit, the mobs themselves. Oh, actually, one thing I should show. Um, if you're having trouble, you know, in some in some games when you select multiple units it'll select the wrong one um, I was having this issue for a while uh, if you want it so that when you highlight over a group of units it'll select the units first and then the towers you need to look at the models and if you look um, the builder the builder is based on the probe model and the probe model has the um, selection layer of zero now one thing that's very subtle that'll happen when you make your models is that there is the selection layer field which will still be zero. Um, you actually want to make this two or some number greater than zero so that and all your buildings have the same two here so that when you highlight a group of towers it'll it'll well when you highlight a group say you have five towers here in your builder in this selection box it'll prioritize the builder but if there was no builder then it would highlight all the towers so it's just a subtle thing but improves your map though. Um, you just gotta make sure that all your towers have the same selection layer and that your builder has a higher number or lower number I mean like zero and now the mobs themselves uh, let's see so you can see them all here I started out with the zergling I believe and then changed a few things like I got rid of his attack ability as you can see it's not there gave him some uh, kill resource amount so that's his bounty uh, cost doesn't matter gave him a prefix editor prefix of mob zero zero uh, inner radius is one so that's the collision with buildings Radius is the collision with units. I left it at 0.375 because I want them to have. A, I don't want them to just stack on each other. And the speed is up to you. Depends what you want to balance. Life, of course, is important. And armor is important, which is up there. So life armor here. But I made that zero for this guy. Attributes. So one thing about my tower defense is that certain waves are biological, certain are armored, flying, etc. So they each have... And then there's towers that are effective against certain uh, types of those. So the first wave is biological. Um... And the second wave is also biological. The third wave is armored, so you want to stagger, I mean, uh, vary your tech tree of defenses so that you can counter certain uh, types of types of units that are coming at you. So I basically duplicated the first one, went to the second one, duplicated that guy, and I basically just duplicated the the unit and then the actor. And in the actor, the only things I changed were the models, um, the death effects to match the model. Um, the sounds, I only changed the what sound, so when you click on him, it's proper. 
the group icon uh, and the unit icon in the wireframe. That's all I would do. I would set the life, set the actor, and then duplicate, go to the next one, make sure, maybe make him armored, maybe make this guy light, make this guy hover, etc., etc. And then I would do that. And then the boss wave, of course, has a lot more health and moves a bit slower, and he has the massive attribute. So now I'm going to step into um, the triggers for now. Uh, there's a lot of comp it might look like a lot of complicated stuff here because um, it has grown from when I first started this. It has changed quite a bit, but I will try and explain everything. Um, so because I added a left versus right mode, so you can play left versus right or team, um, I have a lot of variables to deal with that, like L on, right on. That means whether the sides are on, and there's the vote thing, um, whether the game is ready yet, so when people are done voting. Um, but here's some important wave stuff. So you have the wave types, um, an array of unit types, size 40, meaning I'll probably have 40 waves. I only have 32 right now, but I might increase it later. Uh, wave attributes, wave amounts, and wave number, what we're currently on. So how this works is when I initialize, I'll uh, run the bank load, um, which will, this is important if you want to know how to do banks. This is actually a very bad way of doing it because there's no protection. Um, but in terms of a simple bank, it's pretty good. So you just preload whatever bank you called it, open it, and then if it has has A in section B, then display, I display what wave you've made it to. It just loads an integer from, uh, loads an integer A from section B, whatever. And, um, once that happens, and it, as you can see, there's n there's no decrypting or encrypting going on. So basically, the bank just stores a number, and so somebody can just go into the bank file in your documents and just change it to like a thousand. And that's that's something I didn't really care too much about. I mean, it's not really that important. But if you had like an RPG, this would probably not be sufficient. Um, anyways, after that, I add all the players to human players, then make them all allies, set the votes left to equal the number of players in human players, so it checks active players, oops, checks active, and then it checks if they're a user. Um, and then it creates the modal dialog at the center, adds two buttons to it, and stores them in variables so that I know which one players clicked later. Um, and now I just wait. I just wait until game ready is true, which it's initially false. I just wait and check every second. And meanwhile, while people vote, uh, so a player votes, it checks that they press one of the vote items, and then it checks which one they press. So it hides it for them, and then it checks if they press the first one, then I'm going to make increase their votes for team, and then display that they voted for team. And if they didn't press one, then they obviously press two, so they voted for left versus right. And then I modify the total votes left minus one, which is here, global variable. And then if the votes left is less than or equal to zero, I run end voting. And end voting itself also can be run if the game time reaches 10 seconds, so it's like a backup in case somebody's AFK. And then it'll turn this trigger off and turn player votes off so nobody can keep voting. And um, let's see, so if the votes for team is greater than the votes for left versus right, it sets team mode to equal true, so that'll help things later. Um, displays that game mode was chosen, and it because um, I actually have two lives variables, one is lives and then lives right. Um, in left versus right, this becomes lives left. And in regular team game, everyone on the same team, this just becomes everybody's lives and this gets completely ignored. So to deal with that, um, it's 2020 here, um, but to deal with that, I make it, I add 20 to regular people, to the regular team mode's lives so that they have 40 total. And then if left versus right was chosen, you do this. And then what I did here, I believe, is I made everybody neutral. I added everybody to a group, a local group here. I have another other ones too. Made them all neutral, and then I added one, two, and five, which are the left um, one, two, and this five here. Oops, to uh, temp left group, and then made them all an ally within that group. And then this is just the easiest way of making people neutral versus ally. And I didn't want to make them enemy um, because then they could attack each other with towers, and that wouldn't really be that good. So everybody's neutral, and then these guys get made allies, and then these guys get made allies. And then I hide the vote dialog for all players, destroy it, and then set game ready to true. So back in here, within a second, this thing would get triggered and then it would keep going. So dis um, this resource trading is actually disabled for a couple minutes, so this will just stop that. Run set variables, and so it'll set the, the P1 spawn, P2 spawn, etc. 
these little points here, it sets it sets them into a point array variable, which is somewhere in here. So that later on I can just if player four kills, I can just go or if uh if I want to make player four as builder, I mean, um I can just spawn it at builder spawn points brackets four instead of having to manually type in P4 spawn. That's the advantage of arrays. And here's their build regions, which I track this for dealing with like cross building. If somebody builds in your area, you want to type dash kill and it'll remove the other player's stuff out of your area. Um, landing lights is, um, these are actually to do, to do with the little marker. If you've played the TD, you know that um, I actually display like little markers that run through your pathing, your maze, um, to show where the mobs will actually go. So this is to do with that. And then I go through all the waves and set their, set their stuff. So I set wave amounts current iteration, which starts at zero, if you saw here, to 25. So that's how many are going to spawn on wave zero, which is in-game wave one, but in the editor wave zero. Um, set the type to equal whatever unit type. And set the, this is just a text so that I can display it to the user um, that this wave is biological. And then I modify this to be equal plus one. And then I can do this here. So this will actually be one here. This will be two here, three here three here, four here, etc. And then as you can see the boss wave only has one unit spawned and so on, all the way to wave 32 here. And once that's done, um, makes the timer, makes the leaderboard. Timer is pretty simple here. I'm not going to go through it. I've done that a million times in my other tutorials. Sets the resources and one thing I haven't done is actually for players that aren't in the game to give resources to the players who are in the game. So if somebody left it'll uh, or if somebody, if player 5 wasn't in the game, it would give his resources to player 1 and 2. I haven't done that, but I will do that. Um, creates their builder, adds it to control group 1, just a minor subtle detail that helps, and pans the camera. Says welcome, and then displays some tips. Uh, like this tip will display this information, and those are the buttons on the right side of your screen. Um, so that's done here. And the leaderboard, you can go and see how I did this. Uh, it actually changes the size based on if team mode is true or not, so that um, because it does add it does add two players that show the lives or left lives and right lives. It adds one player. I mean, not a player. It adds one row uh, in team mode to say lives, but in left versus right, it actually has to add two rows for left and right lives. That's why the size is different based on team mode. That's why this variable is handy to have. Um, so, anyways, the wave timer expires. You hide the time window. You set wave running equal to true. Um, and I have to actually disable all the selling for all the towers because people were exploiting the fact that you can sell and build and trap units and prevent blocking, so or create blocking, I mean. So I had to actually disable selling while the wave is running, unfortunately. Um, you can display the wave. This is a string of texts here. I like You can see all the plus signs. I had to make like several here cause so it displays wave for blah, blah, blah whatever the wave name is and then whatever type it is biological or something sets the leaderboard name um, leaderboard title or whatever so that it's updated and then if left is on it's gonna spawn these two it's gonna run this this action I made here which is right there um, for this wave for that wave type from this point ordered to this point and you can see that the way the units move is they move from mob spawn zero one to order spot left to order spot left two to final order spot. But for this this lane, they can go straight down. And same with this lane, they go straight, and for this lane, they have to move like this. So um, if left is on, it's going to do this, and if right is on, it's going to do this. And if team mode is on, these are both going to be true, so it's going to spawn all four spawn points, and it's going to play a sound. And then, so this thing that this is actually running um, is going to do this. So. The amount will be 25 because wave amounts is 25 for most of the waves, except for the boss wave. So when I run it from here, um, this is going to be set to 25. So while it's greater than 25, it's going to create one type, which was the passed in type, which I believe I passed in the the wave type, the current wave. And then it's going to create that um, at the initial spot, so that would be up here. I pass in these numbers, mob spawn 03, 